So let's take a look at what interrupts are. The definition of an interrupt is that it's a hardware triggered software action. Professor Yarabali, what if I had two tasks I wanted my software to do? Let's say we take a busy wait approach. So there are two tasks that we want to perform. We check for the condition for the first task. Is it time to do the first task? And the condition says, no, it's not time to do the first task. So we repeat and check again. So this says, uh, no. So we, we keep checking. And when the answer is yes, we perform the task, whatever the task might be. Task one, let's say. And then we go on, check the same thing for the second task, whether the condition is satisfied for the second task. If it's not satisfied, I go back, check again. And then if it is satisfied, I will perform the second task, whatever the task might be. And then I come down and perform other tasks. This is the other things that I perform and when I'm done I'm going to go back there and repeat this process. Now this is this is obviously very wasteful of resources because if the first task is not ready but the second task is ready I can't go to the second task because I'm stuck in this wait state. And the others only get done when both the tasks have been performed. So as we said, one of the things about an interrupt-based solution is that we do not have to wait for an, something, the task to be ready. When the task is ready, it will interrupt us. So here we have our task one, and we perform the task one when there is an interrupt so this is some interrupt one the interrupt causes the task one to perform be performed and we return from from interrupt so again if the second task is ready the conditions for the second task are ready there will be an interrupt two that will trigger this task we perform the task, task two, and we return from interrupt. Now, the good thing is the main program, which is, which is our loop, if you remember, will perform some setup, right? So that it enables the interrupts and it performs these other functions other interesting things which is the same as this and it continues to perform these other functions which may be of importance and which are which are predictable and when an interrupt occurs we have a suspension we suspend we perform the task if let's say this task is is the one when the return from interrupt occurs we resume where we left off this way, we are responsive to the interrupt without having to continuously check for whether the conditions are satisfied for the task. So we saw the, the overall idea behind interrupt. So let's delve into the details. So first, we'll look at the conditions that need to be satisfied for an interrupt to occur. This is usually part of our setup our setup ritual if you will so the conditions that need to be satisfied the first condition is we have to arm the device arm device so the external device or the internal device that is going to interrupt the microcontroller there is some flag associated with it that says that this device is now able to interrupt our processor. 
The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, enable the device specific. So there is a module within our microcontroller called the nested vector interrupt controller which is which is which has it's kind of the uh, module that controls all interrupts so we enable the nvic specifically for that particular device device specific now the third thing we will do is there is a global enable bit called the i bit this is a global interrupt enable we will make sure that this is equal to zero the i bit is uh, is used usually to turn all interrupts off or all turn all interrupts on it is a uh, it is the main interrupt flag the fourth thing that we have to do is the priority that is devices can have associated priorities in other words their interrupts can have specific priorities that is we if we want the device to interrupt the processor the device should have a prop a priority higher than the task that is currently being run if they have, if you have two devices then we set their priorities relatively so that we decide which device can interrupt which device while it's being serviced the last thing that we want to look at is the trigger unlike these steps unlike the steps one two three four which are part of the setup ritual the trigger is an asynchronous event. This is what causes the interrupt to occur. So let's say our device were a switch. If I had a switch, a button, if you will. So when the switch is open, let's say it's there is no trigger, if, if that's what I'm looking for. But once the switch is closed, so when the switch is closed, that causes a trigger, which means that the device causes an interrupt which is registered by the by the module and it is reacted to so in our case what we will see is there will be a a bit some an ris register and there'll be some bit here that will be enabled to tell us that the trigger has occurred what does ris stand for oh yeah RIS stands for raw interrupt status. So these are where the trigger flags are. These are where the trigger flags are stored and this is what the processor is checking when it knows to figure out when it has to cause an interrupt. 